Rhonda Williams, pay your weight. Hi, Kelvin. How are you doing today? I'm good. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. In my mind, I'm on a beach somewhere. That's the look I was going for today. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I really love about watching your career is how it seems as though you choose roles centering Black young men who really have dreams but fall prey to their circumstances. And we see that in Monster and keep it in theme with your character in this film as he's trying to find his story for his film. I wanted to ask you, what is your story in regards to the roles that you choose to take in this industry? I think um, I think they come to me as I'm growing up, you know, as I'm experiencing and understanding who I am and, and what's pa what I'm passionate about and also the things that really scare me um, about the realizations I have about being black and living in this country, being black and living in this world. I've traveled a lot during quarantine and honestly, it's, 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 you know, it's not any that different other places as well, you know? So I think I, I sometimes I feel like I'm like, am I beating the, the horse over the head, doing the same thing, hitting the same beat sometimes, but, and it becomes, it becomes taxing on my mental health and like in my emotional life. But I do think it's necessary, you know, we're all, as we're all trying to unpack it, I think it's nice to see movies that are also showing us, us in that process of unpacking it as well and humanizing us. So we kind of feel like we're not invisible in that, in that process. So that, that's really what, what's happening when the movies come on my desk. I'm just like, okay, cool. I got to do this. I have something to say. Look, every time I see your name attached to a film, I, I just want to give Kelvin a hug. <laughs> I feel that we are all here for him. Um, but it's interesting that you talk about how these roles do take a mental toll on you. And I really want to know, how do you really decompress from these roles? Because it's one thing to be a part of a film like this, but also, too, to see all of the social unrest that is happening in the world. What do you do to really take time to care for yourself um, with these roles? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm still figuring it out. I, I work, I've been grateful and fortunate. I'm grateful and I'm fortunate enough to be able to work as much as I do, but I do work too much. And I have not taken enough time, I think, for myself. But I, how I look at it is, is what a beautiful opportunity to be able to explore this in safe spaces and to be able to find language for it afterwards and uh, have a, an emotional understanding of what, what's going on in my life and what's going on in the world. Um, I think that gives me peace. Um, and then I try to just share that. So, I, you know, every, I have good friends. I've got a great friends and a lot of great people around me. And the thing, good thing about these sets is there are a lot of cool people. I mean, we look at this movie and I'm like, I get to hang out with Jeffrey Wright and Jennifer Hudson and ASAP Rocky. Like that was my first big job. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough movie to do, but also like, I, I wish we all want to hang out with some of these people. So I, I look at that and I'm kind of like, that's, that's a win for me. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a win. Um, but it's just so interesting, something that's said is typically when we view court uh, films, cases, everybody watches Law and Order, we always hear innocent until proven guilty. But that's not the case for your character. And they talk about guilty and proven innocent. And I want to know, given everything that's happening in the world, has that taken a deeper meaning for you, especially with the timing that this film is being released? Mm, I mean... I think it, it's been, it's a, it's, a, it's a rolling realization. I think I'm in, I've, I've constantly, I've, I've always felt unsettled as soon as I realized that I was going to be demonized just because of the color of my skin. As soon as that, that, that realization happened at a young age, I was like, okay, this is unsettling. But I think even now, th what's happening now isn't different from what was happening in the 1600s. is isn't necessarily different. It's been centuries of this. So, um, um, I think in terms of just processing that it's, 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 it's knowing, it's knowing what do we, what we need to continue to talk about, how we need to make sure we don't start to forget, how do we, we don't become complacent, how we keep reminding ourselves that the system's still very much broken um, and start to understand why, why it's broken. How do we get to the root of the issue and not just brush over it and sand it over with some, or put some wallpaper over it? You know what I mean? Yeah. That that's that's really where I'm at with it, and also that's why I'm at with the movie. I, you know, it's not. I don't really look at it as like a as a big moment for now. I think it's like it's a it's a big moment for forever. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, we're for forever. I'm here for it. Um, well, <laughs> I appreciate you so much. I adore you and all the work that you do. Just continued success and blessings your way. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I appreciate, I appreciate you talking to me too. So thank you. Thank you.